Hello and welcome to the E14 Gamecast, Emotionally 14's gaming podcast. I'm your host, Rob Wade, and I'm joined, as always, by satellite, by my rock, the incomparable and inimitable Blake Harmer. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm here because I can't move, being a rock and all. No, this is true. Um, no, we have, um, we have a little bit of a weird recording schedule tonight. We have a guest on the crazy train, and uh, they are remotely based. So we are ha- we're having to do it remotely again, even though we probably could have got away with doing it live for this week, if, if not for that. But uh, I think it'll be worth it. Hopefully, uh, everybody will enjoy the shows. And, you know, uh, I would say we've got a guest on the crazy train. I should probably clarify. It's just me and you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah. The games cast is just us two poor schmucks. Yeah, the usual. Uh, this, uh, yeah. Us poor schmucks are here yeah. <laughs> to tell you about stuff we did and <laughs> things we got. So um, you were telling me yeah. <laughs> uh, before the recording that you got some new hero clicks. Yes, um, on, well, just the time recording a few days ago, I uh, did a new um, organized play down at War Games Den in Raynham. I'm jealous. For them. I'm jealous. Yeah. I had and, some, um, I had it, some ba- it's Batman animated series, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. I, so have, uh, some, I have uh, a brick of those to undo. I, it's, it's one of those things I've like, it's going to be a toy box. And then it's like, but logistics are still a fucker. <laughs> no more, no less than they always are. <laughs> Yeah, but there's some nice, there's some really nice um, sculpts in there. I've seen, really like the, yeah, some of your, some of uh, Ian's pictures, obviously at uh, Hero Clicks UK. Uh, some of those are bloody marvelous. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, well, I'm slightly annoyed of the overall outcome of the of the organised play, but um, I'll come won, to that right? in a moment. Yeah, okay, did you know I'll, how much he won? Do you know how much he won by? I do not. He won by 10 points. Shut up. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. He beat... And not, you, know, you know what the annoying thing is? I won all of my games, including <laughs> beating him. He just got oh. more points than I did. Oh, man. My condolences. <laughs> yeah, so I was a bit... Oh, so, sorry. My, uh, I was a bit oh, slightly aggrieved by that. Oh, my condolences. <laughs> not winning a hero quick, <laughs> It must be a real grind. How do you cope? I'll tell you... Uh, well, well, that's the thing I... <laughs> that's the thing I didn't lose I won every no, single true. game I wins. even outpointed dad when I fought him and I was yeah. like well I mean it was a very close game I literally as I said I beat him by about 15 points yeah when the time ran out but unfortunately yeah I didn't win somewhere else yeah that's the thing I uh, only I didn't KO enough of uh, Dave's team and um, Adam, who was the other player. Was, yeah, Dave is, uh, Dave is a cagey man when it comes to playing. He's very good at uh, keeping his pieces alive. Adam, I've only played once, but he seemed similar. Yes, he was very... They were both making me work for my points, even yeah. though I was strong. But my, I mean, my team was good. I, I actually drew some pretty strong guys. I mean, my two strongest guys I drew, which I assume were, I think were the, both the... Uh, rarest ones in the pools mm-hmm. was a Bane with a Venom harness. Oh, you jammy bastard. That I think that's one, super rare. It's, I think, yeah, it's one I really want as well. Um, don't tell me, if you tell me you got Zatanna, I will come around to your house and I'll slap the taste out of your mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There wasn't a Zatanna and I don't, well, nobody fielded a Zatanna. I didn't see it. But no. no. Well, that might, um, you know, maybe that means uh, the brick I've got, maybe, you know, who knows? Well, never know. And, um, well, as I said, this is a different brick anyway, so, you know, yeah, it, the Bane ordered, could still be in ordered, it. So. Ordered from the same shop. Well, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. never know. So entirely possible. Um, and a 100-point Superman who's pretty good as well. So. Nice. Nice. But, I mean, nice. yeah, I mean, some of the models, considering they're low, I know it's the new builds and all that, but yeah. some of the models, despite being quite low points, are mm. really powerful. Some, I've got yeah. some stupidly powerful like, I mean, there is a Joker. Like, I think he's a fairly common Joker as well. Yeah. He's only 30 points. Yeah. Has four clicks of health, so not okay. a lot yeah. of health. Um, but, I mean, on his opening dial, whilst he's not particularly strong on his remaining dials, on his opening dial, he can do three points of damage and has got probability control. Wow, okay. That is quite so impressive. For, 30 points yeah. for a prop. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's what I mean. I was just like, so what I... So my team consisted of the 100-point Bane. Yep. I didn't take the Venom Harness because it was like seven points and it really threw Just, me out. It messes up your totals. Yeah, they yeah. Off, yeah. off on the way with relics and the tactics, isn't it? It, it? it looked like a good ability to have, but it was just, yeah, too annoying. Sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Venom. Sounds like It looks like a good ability, but it comes with a lot of fat. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I took the Superman because he was quite powerful. I thought the Bane was more powerful, but okay. the Superman was pretty good. He's bigger. Um, he was good, but he didn't have Indom, which annoyed me. What's that, Bane? No, Superman. Oh, Superman. Mm. Yeah. Indom yeah Superman without less, Indom. Less and less. They seem to be putting willpower in on the dolls a bit more now, I guess. Yeah, he didn't even get that. He, I mean, he has a, he did have this ability that made him do an extra attack of the free action, but it sort of gave people action tokens. Oh, so okay. I suppose he like could free technically attack. activate every turn, but... Yeah, okay. But it was, yeah, still faffy. Yeah, um, it sounds a bit faffy. Uh, yeah, but, and I took a 65-point Harley Quinn. Okay. And and that 30-point Joker, so I was playing at 295. But right. the, six, the 65-point Harley Quinn has got like her abilities change every single click she's got six clicks of health oh i know the kind, yeah at the beginning of her turn you can choose to roll a d6 and go to that number oh wow okay obviously so, you take the risk if you roll a six uh, well yeah so i mean uh, but you can't return to the original number so you'd re-roll if you rolled the same number okay so yeah but i mean you know you have the ability to heal every turn so it'll make it worse every turn it's like a yeah. minute. so i never really used the ability until i got a pass to click free so, yeah, <laughs> so four onwards i would like well you know and i think point, only yeah. and only once i rolled a five when i got to that point yeah. so and that's when i'm like oh. yeah that's but, a bit of uh, brown trousers time yeah yeah but um oh, in know, a plastic she, sense <laughs> She didn't. She stayed in. She never got KO'd the entire game, though. So yeah, all the games. Fair I mean, enough. yeah, it was it was a good day, good game. Um, They're often fun. Was, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was fun. So I'm I'm a little bit jealous because I to say I I didn't get to play with any yet. I haven't had a chance to unbox mine, and I didn't and I missed the uh, OP obviously because I was at a wedding. Yeah, well, he's still got a couple of bricks, so he said he might hold another one. I'm okay. Oh, I see. I, I thought you were going to say he'd sell me one. I was like, I'm sure he fucking would. He's done. He, I've, yeah, uh, his little one's only like a few years old, and she's already fucking ready for uni because of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, he's only. She, he's got a couple of bricks still, and uh, he said he might do another organized play with the with that. He said he's nice. already got. He's still, he said he might be able to do a smaller Infinity War one as well because he's still got a few. Nice ones from that as well. So, yeah, but well, apparently they've already apparent, hmm, apparently Heroclix news wise, they're, they're actually going to be a there's a one already hitting America now. The yeah, Secret, Secret Wars Battle World. Yeah, but so, everybody's uh, um, pissed because it doesn't have Doctor Doom, who like in Secret Wars is one of the most powerful and one of the most important characters in the whole series because they still have problems with li- like I think there's some complication with licensing still. Uh, that's annoying. Yeah, so there's no new. That hasn't, no been, hasn't been a. Before. Yeah, there hasn't been a new Doctor Doom in Donkeys for no. Heroclix. So. No, it's just true. I, I, I'm sure it was something to do with licensing. It might, it might be. I'm sure, but I know. I mm, remember seeing the there's no Fantastic Four, there's no Doctor Doom. Uh, so you know, all bets are off, really, in terms of when they're going to turn up. Presumably, when you know, once the uh, this route, this kind of takeover thing is finalised, they can theoretically chuck them in. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a new arrival on my tabletop front. Okay. Um, I've been selling a few bits recently because I've not been playing them. I think I spoke to you about it off air last time you were around. Yeah, um, I was actually thinking I might go through my collection mm-hmm. and clear out because I don't really play mine a lot. So. But I got this absolute bargain on eBay. Uh, other, Obviously, other ways of purchasing things are available. Mm-hmm. I was on there, you know, obviously I've got the money from selling bits and pieces on there on my PayPal. Um, yeah, other yeah. methods of digital payment are available. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do a lot of due diligence here. Yeah, I know. Be careful. And uh, Bitcoin. I saw <laughs> other cryptocurrencies are available. <laughs> For Be some quick. reason. Yeah. <laughs> other cryptocurrencies are available. For some oh, no, reason. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm too scared to check how my £10 on that one random cryptocurrency <laughs> is doing. I'm assuming not well. No, I'm so. guessing probably not by now. Uh, but I was on eBay browsing around and I saw a listing that I thought, oh, I want one of them. And it's cheap at the moment. So I'll put a bid on up until I think I put like up to 25 quid and it went for 20. I got the Game of Thrones board game. Oh, okay. The yeah, fancy flight one. Yeah, yeah, proper, yeah, proper yeah, not, one. not the LCG because LCG is one of the ones I'm selling because I never got around mm. to playing it. Um, okay. But yeah, I got the, the Game of Thrones proper board game for 20 quid. So I'm well mm. made up. Yeah, it's cool. Got a few Batman models for my Batman miniatures game. Got the, um, the really cool Arkham City Bane, the one that's only available in metal. I got oh, him cheap. massive one. Yeah. yeah, I got him cheap as well. I'm, I've been actually struggling. I think I've managed to solve it now, but I was having a real problem trying to buy a base that he would fit on. 
<laughs> I've got a 50 mil one now, which I'm hoping will uh, uh, do the trick. Funnily enough, the person who sells them is a, is a seller called Gladius Game Arts, and it's, it's, um, it's based really near to us. Oh, okay. Yeah, so next hand over. Oh, okay. So that, that Bane you bought, he, he didn't come with a base or born with a base or molded with a base? He was supposed to base. come with a base. Uh, he wasn't molded to one, no. no. Um, <laughs> by the time I bought the base, he was already primed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, he didn't come with a base, and this was, you know, he is supposed to. And I just asked the seller, "Does he come with a base?" I said, "No." I was like, "All right, fair enough." But it was at the same time, he was way cheaper than everywhere else. Like everywhere else wants 40, 40 quid upwards for him. I went for a tenner, so oh, cool. I was all right with that. He's got a, a couple of bits that are a little bit flimsy, but uh, I've glued them back on, and hopefully they'll stick. Uh, oh. I primed it up, and it's ready to be painted in more depth. And I just want to get the base underneath him, and then I'll move on from there. Hmm. But uh, oh, cool. you think that give your power over me? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yes, because I bought you. You're made of metal, and uh, I bought a base for you. Oh, that's very considerate. <laughs> I'll punch Batman for you. <laughs> Tiger came back for tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's tabletop wise. That's what I've been buying. Um, I bought. Is that the only things I bought for tabletop? I think it is. I've been pretty good. I've had to be pretty good recently because I've gone a little bit nuts in the last couple of months on buying bits and pieces. Plus, we've needed a new bed and things like that. So um, we've had to, yeah, I've had to spend out, shell out a few quids more than I would have otherwise liked in the last couple of months. So I'm being a bit, I'm being quite good. So uh, I bought no clicks. I've been selling clicks. Uh, I've bought no tabletop. I've, well, apart from these two bits, I've been, you know, these few bits, I've been uh, not buying any tabletop stuff. Yeah. So been, well, I might need to clear out. I might need to clear out some clicks off because I know I had a bit of a mini clear out, and now obviously I've got some more. So I might have to look at my save, space saving again. But remember, we were talking about things that must be a real grind for you that I've got no sympathy about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you yeah. Above. <laughs> well, if you if you want to bane with a venom heart, <laughs> I kind of do. <laughs> when will you learn? This is, a, this, is the, this is the thing where I go like. There's probably no point me even offering it to you because you probably you'll probably draw three from your brick. <laughs> no Zatanna, but eight banes. <laughs> yeah, so this Ooh. is a brick of ten. How does this happen? <laughs> one booster full of banes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, the, the scoring of the point schedule—that's fucking immense. Right? That would be great. <laughs> yes. Uh. <laughs> I guess super rare, and not only did I get it right, I got five of the bastards. So that's all the points. <laughs> So I get to kick Blake down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, if we ever play Click's Legacy, it won't be for the, the person. The, the things that will get destroyed are the pieces, not the people. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Well, Brad, I KO job character. You know what that means? Put your leg out. <laughs> I'm going to get my lump hammer. <laughs> oh, I thought it was, I drew five paints. That means I get to break your spine. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only... It's a weird bylaw, but it's a, it's a respected yeah. one nonetheless. Well, you know, what are the odds? <laughs> yeah. I think they're pretty pretty slim, to be honest. I would yeah. be less... You know, very surprised if they're not. Um, but in terms of, like, have you been playing any video games recently? Um, so, currently, I, think, I mean... Oh, I can't remember what I talked about, what I talked about the last recording. <laughs> I think... Let me think. That's bad. Just... You're playing Mafia 3, but yep. you... Um, Mafia yeah. 3, I've persevered with i've now even literally just before we i came onto recording i just did well i assume the penultimate mission because um i've just gone to well i know you've played it i've gone to the casino to have the big shoot up um uh -huh. and it, it's say it's saying go back and talk to the fbi agent and the priest so That's i'm awesome. assuming yeah. i'm assuming whatever happens there will just be the that'll be yeah. the last bit and it'll be credits so i'm assuming oh, you mean the, the big casino outside of town that you have to sort of go into the arse end of nowhere to get to yeah 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 so literally I mean, yeah, you're, you're very i'm good. assuming the end of the game yeah you're so, not uh, yeah i'm but assuming actually, i'm gonna there's there's more there's probably more than you think if i remember rightly in terms of slightly more um game because hmm. i was well, assuming i'll be like yeah because i was assuming you're like oh i'm gonna save for here and i'm going to turn the game back on play it for five minutes and then see the credits probably well, that, Sort of wondering if I if I'm confusing the ending with another game. That's weird. Um, my worry is because it says go back and do something else. I'm like, I don't I don't know why. And it might be due to upcoming games um, yeah. that I'm assuming certain things. Like uh, I just get your Marston syndrome, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, fair enough. And I'm just like, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh... <laughs> 
Yeah. Is that the only one you finished recently? Yeah. Or you, well, uh, you I two. recently got the Platinum for Spider-Man. I can't remember if I mentioned that in the last recording. I think you not. just started playing that when we last worked. Okay, yeah. I've, yep, I I've may have loved it a bit too much and I've got the Platinum now. Right. Um, I've, uh, start, I'm have i currently doing a bit of... I've picked up Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah. I think you and, mentioned you were um, planning on getting that. Yeah, I, so I've played a little bit of that. I must admit, mm-hmm. I haven't had a lot of time to play it recently, and I've been because um, Catherine's been watching it. Uh, mm-hmm. So I've been sort of playing um, when uh, when Mafia be- Mafia when she's not been around, and only playing it when she's been around. And it's yeah, fair been, enough. The way the last week and a half's gone, I haven't played a lot of it, unfortunately. But yeah, it's fair. Just, it happens. That's just the way time's gone. Really, I've played um, a Shadow game recently. Uh, well, I was going to say another game I actually had a little go of yesterday, which I don't know if you're going to say the same thing, because it was given away free recently. Oh, um, no. No. Um, GOG.com had their 10th anniversary sale recently. Oh, yeah. And they did a vote for to give a free game out to customers of GOG, as a thank you for that. Mm-hmm. And they gave away Shadow Warrior 2. Oh, that's pretty good. So I picked that up and I, I did play it for about half hour yesterday. And oh, um, nice. what, I've pl- what I've played of it is more of the same. Okay. So, In a, it's pretty that, good. That's not, that's not a bad thing. It's enjoyable. Yeah. It's basically cutting up demons to cheesy one-liners, basically. So. Yeah. yeah. And dick jokes. Yeah. So, you know, and I, like, I played uh, Duke Nukem Forever to the end, so I can't really lay any criticism there. No, that's the thing. There's no part of Shadow Warrior that I hated. It was just what it is it, it yeah. knows what it is and there's no real <laughs> need to criticize it yeah um i did not play that game that was not the one i was going to say oh no what, so what's the shadow game that you've got then? middle earth shadow of war ah okay. i'll tell you what so far it's more of the same and once again that's by no means a bad thing because i'd forgotten how good the nemesis system is yeah it's so good. i when i played the game i thought it was to be honest if it ended when it, when I thought it should have ended, it would have been it would be it would have been ten out of ten game, and I don't yeah. think it would have got half the flack that it deserved. Because I feel like the only reason they extended the game is because of what it got all the flack for, basically. Oh, I, t- I vaguely recall us discussing this on the previous episode about the um, yeah. going back and fortifying your stuff, right? Yeah, basically, you get to a point where the only way you can see that true ending because you get to a point where it ends. Mm. But then it goes, if you want the true ending, you need to... You YouTube know. it. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's what I did in the end. Well, actually, I think I was like, I don't really care because I don't really play this game for the plot. Yeah. Um, because all it does is make my eye twitch. But Because <laughs> the plot isn't exactly the strongest part of that game. No, uh, indeed. it's um. It, I, is it me or did they seem to make Talion literally just make him look as much like Aragon as he possibly can? It does feel like that, I must admit. Yeah, it does seem, it does appear that way. I would say that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I played that. I finished the game. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I finished um, Infamous First Light. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it's short, fun. I, it's short but sweet. I never got, I just got about two thirds of the way through and just never got around to finishing it. So I did it the other day. Yeah. I, was, I, I had a, like an hour spare and I thought this will probably be enough time. And it was just. Yeah. Just to, you know, I think I needed a bit more than an hour to finish off what I'd done, what I'd left to do, but I managed to get there in the end. It was, I, you know, it's we a had nice, this whole, sorry, go it's sort of standalone DLC, really. I think it's a nice, yeah. It, it goes nicely with Second Son, but it's yes. not, it doesn't do anything amazing, but see, it's fun. See, one thing it does do, you remember last episode we were talking about how, who we'd like to do a superhero game and which one? Oh, yeah, yeah. I decided I'd quite like to see them uh, Sucker Punch, I think it is, isn't it? Mm hmm. Take on the Flash, based on how they. Oh yeah, seeing as they use the neon, neon path. Yeah, 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 the neon running is very much like. It feels like that, you know. Hmm. Um, well, no, yeah, Sucker Sucker Punch have got a very good heritage with that, obviously, with the Infamous really games. So. And uh, Sly Raccoon, I think, is them as well, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. I, what I played of that was excellent. Yeah, there have never been games that I've massively got into. I've only ever played, dabbled in them, if that makes yeah, sense. Like, I've only gone... The only thing I wanted them to have, which they didn't, was a little bit more stealth, because it was about a spy, but it didn't feel like stealth was a core mechanic, which sounded odd to me. The I think the, that was the thing. I think it was it was half-platform game, half-stealth, and because and it was aimed at kids, I think they didn't want to be as 
as tough as probably some like some stealth games can be. So I think yeah. they, and I think in areas they dumbed it out down them. I think they made some parts of it really hard to the point where you'd have to use stealth, but they never made the stealth so hard that it was much of a challenge. If you know what I mean, it's not like don't, yeah. you're not, you don't don't expect like Hitman levels of stealth. <laughs> you know? No, I, th- I think you know I barely expect that from Hitman. Sometimes, I, <laughs> especially the way no. Jim plays it. Just dual ballers all the way, huh? <laughs> dual ballers walk through the front door. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So she so she plays like a space orc. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I feel like she'd do really well at shooters even though she doesn't enjoy them. Uh but I think when it comes to Jen, my sense is that she would be really good at um games if she went because I mean the only reason I'm any any cop at them, I'm still not very good. The only reason I'm any cop at them in general is because I took the time I was play I went through all the different phases of, you know, two D side scrolling platformers, then to three D platformers and yeah, yeah. shooters and three D shooters. And I've been through all the different gradations and I've learned how to control these new dimensions one by one. Whereas if you're coming into it for the first if you come into a first person shooter for the first time, you're kind of like, Oh, I've got it oh hang on, I've got to look with this and like that's weird. Yeah, move with this stick and I look around with that stick. That's really, yeah. Should yeah. I get an all right with um, Doom or something? One of the classic shooters where you can't look up and down. Mm. Mm. I've never, I've never tried. Think, you know. Yeah. No, I remember when I, I think the first game that gave me that whole twin stick look, and also was only uh, like it was inverted um, looking, like so down was up, up down. Yeah. Was the original Time Splitters? Okay. And that You're threw me up. for a loop for a while, like I think for like the first, I don't know, hour or so of playing it. Mm. But once I got my head around it, that's why I fell in love with it. I think that's why, you know, every other game I've gone, yeah, no, that these, these control scheme is perfect. Mm-hmm. And actually, it was funny because I think I then went back to an older game. I think it was like, I think it was like the original Medal of Honor on PS1. And I realized that they, I was like going, oh God, these controls are horrible. Because they kept it simplified and all that, but actually, when I looked through the control scheme, they actually had that time splitters control scheme, but it was called advanced. Oh, okay. And it's like so, FIFA, does, FIFA does that. They've got the alternate and classic. And if you play mm-hmm. a different, uh, if you play like Pro Evo, they have. I think they have it inverted by default. Mm-hmm. They're like um, circle is on the PlayStation pads because obviously I realise this is where you play most. Circle mm-hmm. is either shoot or cross, depending on which version of the control scheme you play and then oh, okay. they then um square is the other one whichever mm. one it's not yeah because i think that was my problem well no my problem was that i went for a period of playing a lot of pro evo yeah and square was always shooting that mm-hmm. and then when i then went oh i'll try a fifa thing as everyone says it's better than pro evo now it's like oh God, what like, do is lob shots i'm terrible <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm terrible at football games anyway, so I, I didn't really read too much into it. But. I'm not great at them. Um, but yeah, I, I do kind of, I do enjoy them on a sort of... Mm. Thing is, like, I'm, it's, I'm basically the perfect customer for EA Access because I like sports games, but not enough to trawl through and get the updated versions brand new for full price for the stats. I'll wait till they go free mm. into the vault and play them then. All oh, right, yeah. No, I... Um... I normally buy a football game once every so many years and also it will be a fairly older one so I'll mm-hmm. never pay full price for one. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think the last one I bought was a couple of years ago and that was FIFA 14, which was like the first current gen. One. Yeah. So I'm amazed they're not giving that away at CEX now. Other second-hand retailers are available. I think I paid a fiver for it a couple of years ago so 10p. I can't imagine it's a lot now. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like 10p or something ridiculous. And I think that's why I'm like, I don't care about up to date stats. I don't follow, I don't watch football or anything like that. But I just, I enjoy having the odd kickabout with a mate when sometimes it's not, yeah. That's why I like EA Access because I also don't care about owning the disc for the football games when I get them, like when I get them after the fact. So having a digital one that I can just delete when I'm bored of it is great. Hmm. It's a bit like I've got uh, one of the NHL games as well. I can't remember which one it is. Yeah, same. I pick them up. It might be NHL 17. But even then, I picked that up. Again, I think I only paid like five, ten pounds for it. You mm-hmm. know, but I was like, I like, I like ice hockey every now and then. I like getting punch up, punch ups, and stuff like that. So that's why I'm like, don't really need, you know, to get to it, truly into it. If you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Uh, the same way, like, you know, NHL, Madden, 
NBA, they're all part of the access thing. So you get them all kind of eventually if you're willing to wait. Obviously, the seasons, I think, are slightly different with the other games because FIFA is... You tend to find that the one from the year before goes cheap at the end of that football season. So like in April or May, it goes into the vault. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I noticed that they always go into sales around yes. the, the summertime. So they'll, they'll go out for like, they'll start putting them out for like 20 quid. I think that's their mm-hmm. last ditch attempt to make some money out of it. And then yeah, for sure. That, like, because that's the thing. I know if I go into CEX, like FIFA 18 will probably be quite cheap now. So it's like a, I think it's like 10, 12 pounds or something like that. It's not much. Yeah, which considering it was 20 quid not two months ago, you know, and probably yeah. even more, a little bit like that. It's just amazing how much they lose their value. Yeah, um, indeed. They don't hold their value uh, much at all just because of I the know, I know wrestling's the same. So uh, To a point, yeah. Um, Fire Pro just came out on PS4. Still yeah, 40 quid. Still I, not paying it. I refuse to pay 40 quid for it. But it's not, it's not. I mean, I'm sure it's a very good game. But I'm sure it's, it's, it's uh, all the reviews have been very strong, but the price for me is still prohibitive. It's I won't play it enough. Mate, no, A, I won't play it enough. And also B, I don't know. A little I know it has that very old school vibe to it, and I know that the game is more than it looks, but I yeah. just thought it looks like an indie game. It shouldn't why would I pay forty quid for a game that looks like it was released on bloody Game Boy still, you know. Yeah, well quite. You know, they've they've not they've updated, obviously they've made it sort of smooth around the edges, but realistically I haven't fundamentally altered the um the graphics in any like significant way. Uh, no, and that's what I'm saying. Why is it forty quid? There's no I can't see the yeah. justification. It might for just 40 be the, it might just be the niche element of it, because obviously there are only two players in that game. There's WWE and then there's that one. Because there's no TNA uh, games anymore. Yeah. And and also I appreciate that the people that love Fire Pro are going to be the diehard wrestling fans. Which Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Kenny Omega's on the niche. box. Yeah, well, that's not exactly. Yeah. So I know I know that it is more of a niche market, but I just thought you'd get, you know, you'd get, okay, I'm not, I wouldn't say I was, as, the, as I said before, I'm not the biggest wrestling fan in mm-hmm. the uh, whole E14 group, but I means. think if they put it, even if they put it out at like a 20 quid, I think I would have taken a punt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I think that, that would I'd be more been all over the digital. Twenty quid was sort of the level. The, the level I would have gone. That would have been the price I would have gone for. And now I'm sitting there going, "Oh, I'll wait for it to go in the sale." That's literally all it's made me do. So yeah, I'm not. I, I don't have to rush to get it. I will if it comes down cheap enough. I definitely will buy it. But I'm not yeah. paying forty quid for it. No, I'm the same way. I'm just. I refuse. Mm. It's just too much to mm. justify. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same way with like, there's a few games like that. I, I'm a little bit like that with the idea of buying Diablo 3 on the Switch, but I may still do it because I still haven't played it on any other console and I like the idea of Travel Diablo. Yeah, I mean, I love, the, I did play Diablo 3, I did love it, but uh, my downside was I have already played it through and yeah. I was like, do I really want to? Yeah, and that's the thing, I can pay 40 quid for the Switch version, which yes, it's a nice because of the travel element, I do mm-hmm. see that. For me, uh, it's certainly an appeal. Uh, yeah, and I can, and for you, because of the travel element and because you've not played it before, I'd say, yeah, go for it. it yeah, be worth I'm it. definitely thinking But that. considering I've already played it, you know, uh, I, I, and I know, it's that little thing that annoys me with Switch in general is that they re-release an older game. Yeah. But then I will say it will be full price and then I'm like sitting there going, I know for a fact I can get this on another system for significantly cheaper. Yeah, like 10, 15 quid at a push. Yeah, I mean, the Diablo on Xbox or PlayStation would be a lot cheaper than that. And that's why I'm I'm like, yeah, it's going to, the price difference isn't enough to play it portable for me sometimes. Yeah, at the moment, I'm finding that to a point. Although, like I said, I probably will end up going for it. And same with uh, Wasteland 2 as well. I think I mentioned on the last episode, I like the idea of travel fallout. But, um, you know, because Shelter's just not doing it for me. No, it was always only ever a bit of it's fun. A fine, yeah, it's a yeah. fun thing. It's a fun little game. Um, have you been following the previews of 76? I have. I think it sounds right up my street personally, so I'm going to probably pick it up. Yeah, I'm still I'm still on the fence a little bit. It, it is it is purely the multiplayer bit that's making me on the fence. There's nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah, every other part of the game looks amazing and I really want it for every other. My worry is that I am predominantly a solo player because obviously a lot of my friends play at different times to me. So my worry is, and I know they seem to only ever have a lot, have a lot of people, so they seem to separate people so they, it's not like you're encountering humans every time. 
Yeah. But especially when they said you can do it in single player, but the later game levels, you'll find harder a single player mm. or find a lot easier if you have a group. Makes me think, mm, am I going to have Destiny Syndrome where I'm just basically yeah. finding a bunch of people I never met just to get through a bit? Or am That's I going my- to play a bit and I'm not going to be able to do it because I don't have anyone with me? That's my only concern, yeah. I may end up buying it, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a possibility that uh, it may find its way into my collection. Yeah, so what, what was your... Yeah, what, 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 what bits uh, would grab it for you? Because my worry is the multiplayer part, as I said earlier. You can turn that off. You, okay. PvP can be complete... Well, PvP... Well, you can... can the off. green thing you can, I could see you could turn off because you can have, like, you know, you just on there and people that shoot you don't do any damage and you don't do damage to them. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But my worry was more the forced cooperative play that I mentioned earlier, you know. Oh, so uh, yeah, like, okay. Yeah. So, like, I feel like I have, you know, like, you know, they they make this big deal going, oh, yes, you can play the entire game in single player. You'd be a fucking masochist, but you can play the entire game in single player. And well, luckily, I'm, I'm like, a massive fucking masochist, so there's that. Yeah, but that's the thing. I went, well, if I did want a truly Dark Souls bastard, but yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, well, I mean, part of the thing I'm one, part of the thing that makes me not uneasy about the idea of buying it, but just makes me a little bit unsure is just the sheer lack of time I've had to play video games recently. Yes, that's true. I mean, it's a I big feel like hmm. in time. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I was going to wait on impressions from the beta before I decided mm-hmm. whether I was going to buy it or not. Yeah. Cause I mean, okay. These initial things have assuaged a little bit of what I, my worries for the game. Yeah. Same, same. General, general impressions have been, it's good. You know, there's mm-hmm. nothing to be worried about. You know, it is still fallout and it's still a largely lonely experience, even though it's multiplayer. Yeah. Because that was my thing. I thought what I love about fallout is going away the and finding missions yeah. and, you know, finding houses that are completely disowned, but there's a story in there, if you know what yeah. I mean. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Of, well, you know, well. You'll find logs and stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. the stuff that sucks me into Fallout. And, you know, and then I was a bit like, but there's no NPC characters giving out the missions. And then I was a bit like, mm. that's a bit, I mean, yeah, okay, you can find missions and terminals and books and stuff like that, because that was yeah. still a part of the games. Sure, but, but yeah, but that's why I was a bit like, mm, yeah, yeah. I I do know what you mean. It there's there's still there's still an unease to it for me about mm-hmm. like will it's not it's not a day one like Fallout Four would a bit was and how oh yeah, and I mean, Vegas. well, I mean, if, 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 in contrast, Fallout Four obviously I pre-ordered the Pip Boy, so yeah, <laughs> you know, true. yeah, and um, yeah, and uh, and you know, and I still would you know and. If they, I mean, I mean to be honest, the Power Helmet edition did look good. But um, if it weren't for the fact that I would have to pre-order it and spend a load of money on a game that I may not like, that was a bit that put me off. Yes, uh, that is the thing, isn't it? Like, yeah, you know, if, and that's the thing. If they'd said, "Oh, I'm doing another New Vegas," I would have been all over that. Yep. If they'd announced, I mean, if Fallout seventy six, it was supposed to be. The rumor was it was going to be Fallout Switch, and I was so up for that. The notion that it would be the Switch version of Fallout, even though I've played all those original games to death, mm. like you know, 150 plus hours each on the others. Mm. But if they'd said New Vegas Switch, I'd have been like, yes, sign oh, me up. Oh, yeah, yeah, day one, yeah, day one, 100 <laughs> percent pre ordered, pre loaded. Although Switch mm. seems to have a weird thing about it says you can pre order it from this day, and what they mean is the next day because <laughs> Overcooked 2 yeah. is not for me the day before, like it promised to. It unlocked for me yeah. day of release instead, but it's fine. Hmm. I missed out on a couple of burgers, but you know, <laughs> making making some sushi was uh, took me a little bit longer. But so it goes. I'm, I'm stuck now anyway because I remember you saying that. Uh, Worlds. I think remember when we talked about it before. I can't remember if it was you or whether I read somewhere that it said that somebody had basically said, "Yeah, one, two, and three worlds are easy, and hmm. then it gets harder." And sure enough, I was able to breeze through one, two, and three by myself and three star most of them first time and three star them all eventually. And then I got to world four and I'm like, fuck. Oh, what the hell? But it's fun. It's really fun. I don't know if you've played Hmm. much of it yet. I've not, I've still not got the second one yet. Um, It's It's basically just more of the same in a good way. uh, I think, yeah. And I think the only thing that slightly put me off was the price tag because I knew it was more of the same, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you want it to. Because, I mean, like the original game didn't release for 20 quid and I felt like they'd upped it to 20 quid because of the popularity of it. 
How much did it cost when it first came out, the first one? I swear it wasn't that. I swear it was more near like the 12 to 15. So that's why I'm Maybe. surprised. It's the fact they whacked an extra like eight quid on it. I don't know. I might be wrong. but yeah. it was, I remember... But I mean, like, in, on the flip side, um, another game that came out that looks very similar to the Overcooked style theme. Um, I don't know if you've seen videos of it being played, but there's a game called Catastronauts that's come out recently. No, I'm not familiar with that one at no. all. No. It's basically overcooked if you, if it was faster than light. So in in the sense that you guys are running on a ship, you're being attacked by an alien ship, but you have to be working together to fire the guns back and repair the ship and do oh, other that sounds things. Amazing. Dispose of bombs that are landing on the ship and stuff like yeah. that, and it's adding more and more. It's still so, and, and I mean, even graphically, it looks like overcooked. So it does look like. It's an overcooked spin-off almost, but I yeah. don't think it's even made by the same people. No. But you are dressed up as like little, you know, red shirts and you can do little poses and stuff like that, like salutes and stuff like yeah. that. It looks good fun, but I mean, com- comparatively, it is that's about 12 quid mark. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying. It's about eight quid cheaper than Overcooked 2, which, and I was yeah. like, they're both very similar games. So that's True. why I'm like... What uh, platform is Catastronauts on? It's... Definitely on PS4. I've not checked the Switch. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm assuming it's multi. I'm assuming it's multi-platform because I'm assuming it's. So uh, I have seen it out on um, PS4. I'm therefore assuming it's on Xbox One. Yeah. Whether it's on Switch or not, I don't know. So don't quote me on that. So I'd, have to, I'd have to look on the store, but you know, yeah. to, to dig that out. That's fair enough. And I'm short of going and picking up the switch, which is literally there anyway. But um, <laughs> I'm happy to do that after the recording. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, I can't really uh, yeah. But that 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 looks good fun as well. I mean, I picked up quite cheap in a sale, and I want and I want to get some people over to play it. But it's um, an, old, an older party game. But it's called I don't know if you ever played it. It's Ultimate Chicken Horse. No, uh, it's basically. The idea behind it is that it's a 2D sort of platformer game mm-hmm. where you your characters have to get, you each play like an animal and you have to get to an end goal. Yeah. But each round, each of you plays a sort of a trap or a, you know, a weapon or something that's like okay. an obstacle to try and stop people getting to the item. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that if you make it too hard, none of you score any points. Because okay. one of you has to have got to this ability, you want right. to actually score the point. But if everyone gets to the no. goal, it's obviously too easy, and therefore nobody scores the point. Oh, so you have to be quite yeah. clever. But it's the idea that you can make maps that completely fuck people over, to make yeah. it as difficult as possible, and stuff like that. So it's got, I suppose, it's a little bit like uh, like a multiplayer version of Mario Maker in a way, I guess, because you're sort of putting items and objects in a way to try and stop things or make things more difficult. Yeah, you know, and you can build over pretty, and that's the thing. You add extra layers as it goes on, so each time, each one is a little bit more difficult mm-hmm. because you're adding things where you can, you know, but you get some abilities where you can choose to delete to delete and the specific bits, so you can help get around it another way, that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting concept, and I'm, that's why I'm hoping to give it a try. But I've seen some videos that are being played. And that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, you say Ultimate Chicken Horse, it's called. I believe so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Peculiar. It's a weird name, but yeah, look it up. Yeah, it's okay. a weird name. Yeah, yeah. yeah it sounds like, a, sounds like an interesting one. I'm finding myself at the moment, there's a couple I do fancy getting. We talked a bit about Diablo 3. Mm-hmm. Um, one that I really want to get is Into the Breach, which is the new game from Oh, Subset. yes, yeah, yeah. It basically just looks like Advance Wars mix, meets Mech Warrior. Yeah, and with it FCL elements as well. Amazing. Mm. And I just want it really bad. And so I'm going to probably try and get it at some point. Well, I say try. I mean, I could just buy it. It's It costs money and I have some money, so I could mm. always do that. Yeah, I'm a little bit tired at the moment and, I know, and I'm trying to cult some of my games down at the moment. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be good. It's, it sucks. <laughs> Especially in lieu of my last game of the year, which I've already pre-ordered, unsurprisingly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I literally just said to normally. I, normally on the build up to Christmas, I choose one game and I go, "That's going to be the game that's going to carry for Christmas." Because I normally don't try to buy yeah. more. Because if people want to buy me a game or give me money towards a game, then I know that for Christmas and birthdays I can mm-hmm. then buy them. So yeah. uh, and 
I chose the, obviously I've chosen the one game that I know I wouldn't be able to wait till Christmas to play. So fair, yeah. So and I don't even need to name it. But um, Does it by any chance rhyme with breadhead <laughs> root for Fremption? Yeah, that that would might be the one. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, that sounds reasonable. I think that's probably going to be quite a popular game. I think people are going to like it very much. I think it was an outside Xbox video that made me laugh the other day because it was like they do videos of what's coming out that month at the beginning mm-hmm. of every month and um, yeah I think they're one for October they mentioned all these games they started off saying oh yeah Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming out this game and they said oh yeah so all these other games are coming out like Super Mario Party and Soul yeah. Calibur 6 and all that sort of stuff which are all games I do want mm-hmm. but, but yeah and they just went oh all those games and only one that matters <laughs> <laughs> ouch. <laughs> ouch ouch I think it's ouch. because it's such a it's stupidly enormous game that it's going to be, you know. Yeah. I mean, I can only afford one game this month, and yeah, it's going to. It's going to be that. that. Yeah, yeah. I might, I might do the because I know I'm not going to get time to play it right away, if, if at all. So I'm what I probably do is not get it day one, mm. play some of my other games, and maybe pick up some cheaper stuff in the meantime. You know, rather than do the whole full price, full big budget AAA release now, I might be yeah, yeah. just waiting a bit buying something like like say like a you know like an into the breach or a wasteland 2 maybe because mm. as i mentioned to you obviously it's nice to have portable fallout light yeah yeah no as i said i've still got some smaller uh like indie games like i mean i still haven't finished all of hollow knight or um or yeah. well i don't think i'll ever finish enter the gungeon but i'm still determined mm. um but uh, yeah they've been sort of my main switch games at the moment I, obviously yeah. i did want the big Switch releases, aside from Into the Bridge, that's the only one I'm really eyeing up. Really, that, okay. that are are the more multiplayer games. So obviously, like Mario Party and um, obviously Smash when that comes out later in the year. Yeah, but uh, yeah, apart from that, there's nothing massive on the Switch that I'm gunning for. I mean, that um, I can't remember what it's called. There's like that mech game looked quite good. Uh, yeah, but I don't know when that's out. I don't know if that's out next year or. It, it looked like it basically looked like a mixture of armored core and zone of the enders but oh, okay nice but uh yeah but that, that looked like it was it was shown at e3 i can't remember from life what it's called something nice. mm, damon x machina or something i can't remember what it's oh, okay called. that sounds pretty cool yeah but yeah it, 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 it looked fun and i thought i like mech style games normally yeah. So not, yeah so i'm looking forward to that um i saw that dragon balls finally come out on the switch yeah, or, they, they yeah. seem to have done a few. They do a lot of, with the Switch, they do a lot of just jumping, so many releases just bounce right on and they're like, 10 today, 20 today. Yeah, they seem to be like, there seems to be a massive dearth for a while and then it's just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, have all the things. And I think that solves the problem. I go like, yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'll see a game and go, oh, that looks cool and then something else come out and I'll go, yeah, yeah and I'll completely forget that that game even exists. Mm. But, mm. but yeah, Into the Breach is definitely on my list to buy eventually yeah so. i do fancy that one let's say i've got that on my list i've got wasteland 2 and like i said diablo 3 is kind of finding its way yeah. closer and closer they're, to my list they're all they're all good good games to go for so, yeah, yeah i think so i should go back to wasteland 2 i must have, I, did, I only ever dabbled in it a little bit before when we did the youtube that youtube video a couple of years ago yeah, but, yeah. um yeah, Mrs. Bitch. Uh, yeah. I did, I, did, I did what I did play of it I did enjoy it it was definitely it played more like the old school fallouts but um, yes yeah but I did enjoy it nonetheless mm-hmm. so yeah. I think next yeah. I might if I'm going to play I uh, say I've got Shadow of War to play on uh, Xbox at the moment mm-hmm. I'm thinking maybe on PlayStation I might uh, I don't know I mean I've got Spider-Man I did pick yeah, up yeah do Spider-Man do Spider-Man yeah I should probably do Spider-Man <laughs> although I did just play first hey Rob hey Rob hey Rob 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 yeah. do Spider-Man <laughs> I maybe I should play something other than Spider Man because I've got Spy- I've got I just played First Light, which is a big jumpy game as well. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I suppose I I was I was a bit apprehensive initially because I was already playing Mafia Three and I was like, oh, I'm going from one open world game into another open world yeah. game. But Spider Man isn't going to win any awards for like the best game of the year because that's still currently God of War for me, unless Red Dead. Well, that's my other that. option of what I can play instead. Mm. I mean, God of War, I really loved, and mm. hopefully you will too. Um, you know, uh, I thought it was one of the best games I've played this year so far, but yeah. Spider-Man is just fun. Mm-hmm. And I've not played a game for a while where I've gone, this, you know, this is just fun to play. It's not, yeah. you know, not breaking any real massive ground in any other way, because I mean, mm-hmm. yes, a lot of the mechanics are obviously quite Arkham heavy and or 
or like yeah, the older yeah. Spider-Man games. Well, so pretty much the same as, um, what's it called? Uh, I'm finding with uh, Shadow of War, it's basically just Arkham Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, I suppose if you're playing that, you might not want to then play Spider-Man because obviously Spider-Man is still that whole dodge and whole hit multiple people with the combat yeah. and that. But... Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's the the because of Spider Man being quite cocky in the humor and all that, you know, quite sarky. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought they, maybe that's why I enjoyed the. Uh, maybe I enjoyed it more. Maybe that's also why it felt fun because you know, obviously, Batman's all dark and brooding and all that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, it's not. While Spider Man's just yeah, let's go punch these guys. Quips and thwips. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to beat you up and do a, and do a cool one liner, you know, or something yeah. like that. So it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I've got like because I've got other games I could be playing. I've got um, Uncharted Four, which I still haven't, fin- still haven't started, good which game. is supposed to be very good. Did you do all the other three? Oh. Yeah, I played all yeah. the other three. Yeah, yeah. A while back, admittedly. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I like yeah it. you'll be you'll you'll be fine with four then. Yeah, yeah I mean four. Right. The same, isn't it? I mean, it is more the same. There's yeah, a little probably. bit more. Yeah, there's a couple of little minor changes with it, but yeah, you know what you're getting with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like it. Obviously, it's the end of this whole overall story, though. So, uh, yeah. And I've yeah. got um, Detroit to play as well. Yeah, I need to go back and finish that. I sort of mm. got about, I played about probably about a third of it, and then I sort of put it down and I've not come back to it. But yeah. That's not yeah. because of, not because it's a bad game. It's literally because those sort of games I have to be in the mood for. And I just mm-hmm. not, I think I've, uh, I've not been in the mood when I want, when I've had time the time to play it, and I know it's one that Cat yeah. watches as well. And I'm, yeah, yeah, this is it. I think Jim would probably enjoy watching it if I were to put it on. Um, and I mean, like Last Guardian's now finished with thank fuck, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I w- I keep meaning that that is on my to play pile, and it has been on my play pile for a good couple of years now. But yeah. um, I've not. Yeah, I've not brought myself to do that one. <laughs> no, it's basically in the same way as you know. It basically just annoys me in the same way as. Uh, uh, Ico did because I th- I think I remember liking Shadow of the Colossus more than Ico, but still not enjoying Shadow of mm. the Colossus that much. I think you should just admit that maybe Team Ico games aren't for you. I know this. I mean, it was only because um, I specifically made a point of saying to Jen, you know, pick something out if there's anything there that because I had loads of. I mean, you know, what I'm like with accumulating credit. Mm. I accumulated a couple of hundred quid's worth, and I was like, you know what, you know, you don't often get like she gets to watch games and she's always welcome to play them if she wants to, but she never get, she doesn't often get a chance to choose something out. Yeah. So I thought, enough. why don't you have a look and see if there's anything there you, you'd want to play? And she picked that out and I was like, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah so, no, so. well, fair enough. That's all right. That's what she wants to play. That's fine. And yeah. I mean, she seen, sounds like for the most part, she enjoyed it until we got to the latter parts. Yeah. Like, she just yeah. got a bit like, I think eventually she just gets burned out on playing the game and then just mm. wants to see how it ends. And I ended up playing it for her to get it through the last bits. Mm. But you know, there's but the other thing is that I find myself at the same time as I'm saying, I've got no money, no time to play games. Um, and at the same time as I'm like, Oh man, you know, just, I've got, um, you know, no time, no, all that stuff. I'm finding myself looking at things like the Arkham Remastered and I'm finding myself looking at things like, um, what was it called? What was I looking at the other day? Bioshock, the collection and things like that, where I could totally justify not buying them because especially in the case of Bioshock, I have the 360 versions as a digital copy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm pretty bad. I mean, um, I own both Metro games on Steam, for example. Never finished them. I mean, I played the first one. I got, fairly far into it but then we mm-hmm. put it down for whatever reason or I got stuck on a bit I can't remember yeah. but recently the PlayStation had the uh, whole remastered version of both Metro games going like stupidly cheap I think it was like £6.50 oh wow that's pretty and, uh, that's and I yeah well, it weren't, weren't that expensive and I just went oh yeah I've it yeah I'll get that because I thought yeah. I might enjoy I might enjoy it more on a pad mate with what yeah, I was, why would what you, I was why would you not at that point have a punt you know yeah, uh, but again, not actually started it since I bought it because I've been playing so many other games. Yeah. And I think that was the reason I thought, like, Red Dead's going to make me succumb because the hype's going to get to me. I'm going to want to play it mm-hmm. when it comes out. So yeah. I know I will probably, when I get it, I will probably drop what I'm playing and start that. Mm-hmm. That's why I thought I'm not going to buy any other games because I can use this month to clear other games that I want to get cleared. Yeah, you can clear your stuff. And then in the event that I do finish Red Dead before you know, Christmas, I know I have got lots of back games in my back catalogue that I can be playing. Mm-hmm. And I thought I'd rather save my money, get through Christmas. And, you know, and if yeah. I then 
Because that's the annoying thing is that I know that half the games I want or will be want for Christmas, even if I don't get them as Christmas presents, I can either get my birthday money and also January sales will probably be knocked down. Yeah, they'll be the price or you generally rely on to become sale ones. Yeah, okay. The ones I know will be expensive will be like Mario Party and Smash Mario because, Party will hold, yeah, Smash and because Mario. Because Ninten- Nintendo never put their fucking prices down ever. They hold, um, they even, well, I mean, they even hold their value. I, I don't think it's exclusively down to Nintendo because I think a lot of this, even the secondhand stuff seems to hold its value better than any other publishers. Mm. Well, no, I went in CEX, like Zelda's still 45 quid in CEX. Yep. And yeah, I'm just totally. like, wow, you know, I thought mm-hmm. World and His Wife would have played it and traded it in by now. But yeah, one would think, but uh, apparently not. Yeah, no, it surprises me. Yeah. Um, my big problem is actually, I was actually thinking, and I keep humming and ahhing, and I feel awful for doing it. Mm-hmm. But, well, I don't know why I feel awful, but <laughs> I don't I find myself not playing on the Xbox as much anymore. Right. And I think it's because a lot of the time I, I tend to play games on the PlayStation. I, you know, if I do get a game or if I find it's cheaper on the Xbox, I'll buy it. Like, I mean, I was, again, just because I was in CX, I was eyeing up uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, and I don't know why, it was the same thing I had with The Witcher 3, um, it seems to be five quid cheaper on Xbox than it is on PS4. Yeah, okay. And I don't know why. It's probably just because it's more popular on PS4 or whatever. Yeah. They know they can get more money. But, yeah, but I was sitting there going, aside from, okay, getting the odd game cheaper, and the, I, was like, well, I was like, what am I actually needing the Xbox for? And I thought, I'm basically waiting for Crackdown. Okay, yeah. Because there's nothing, there's no other first party games coming out for the Xbox One that I'm personally aware of or interested in. I no, mean, no, it's for, Pickens, really. Forza Horizon looks fun, but I've never been massively into it. I mean, I enjoyed mm-hmm. Forza Horizon 3, but yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, I, it's not a game I'd rush out to buy on day one anyway. Yeah, I, I do. I do understand what you mean. It is, it's tricky at the moment. Like there's, there's not a lot of xbox exclusive stuff that really well it's, it's not that there's nothing it's just none, none of it's of interest to me personally I'm yeah like, like if i'm thinking of the last few first party games come out i mean yeah for otherwise and not not really my bag. um uh, yeah really good reviews and i mean if it's like if it's like for the horizon 3 which it does look obviously quite close to i really like for the horizon 3 and i'm sure you know i will have plenty of hours of entertainment out of it yeah um you know, I'm not saying this is not, does not mean it's a bad game. It's just racing games have never been. I've never been a massive draw for me. But, yeah, my my thing know. with them is uh, I like them, but I prefer the ones with normal circuits rather than the stuff where you go off road. Just because I'm always, I always end up getting lost and pissed off. Oh, okay. My my thing is more. I like things a bit more grounded in the fun element rather than the right. uh, rather than the seriousness of it. You know, yeah, you so that's why I've, you definitely play all right with my friends because. My uh, Forza friends are always looking to do what we call shenanigan evenings, where it's yeah. like, oh, can we? How far can we get the car to? You know, we we get out the car with the fastest acceleration and top speed we can, and then we'll park another car with a wedge shape at the other end of the track <laughs> and see how far it can go. And see how far it can go once you launch it off the ramp, uh, mm. use the other car as a ramp, and they just keep the handbrake on. That sort mm. of thing. And uh, you know what you also end up doing is you choose a track with a massive straight. I can't remember okay. the name of the fucking track. It might be Le Mans, actually, but there's this one with this enormous, it must be a mile and a half of just oh, well, so maybe just... more than that, just straight run. And you can get like up to a 200 miles an hour on a fast car hmm. and it'll just go shooting into the fucking sky. Hmm. Or we'll put on some stupid rule that makes it life more difficult for us, but we'll enjoy the race all the more for the giggling like twats we'll be doing in the background. Like we'll hmm. go to, uh, you know... We'll go to something like Nürburgring, which is all corners in the dark with the Fallout car. You know, the one they did for Fallout 4? Oh, yeah. So that yeah. car has a weird thing where the basically the headlight, there's one headlight at the front and it's basically, it looks like it's made of rice paper. If you touch a corner, it just winks out. Okay. So we were driving around Nürburgring in the dark with no headlights in a car that <laughs> d- uh, gets up to about 300 miles an hour top speed because it's ridiculous. Mm. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was, I don't know, 300 miles an hour is hyperbole, but uh, it goes much faster than some of the other cars. Mm. And we're driving around in this car that like, but it, you know, we were on Le Mans, which is a, uh, Le Mans or Nürburgring, which is a massive, massive track. 
and it takes about 10 minutes to do a lap when you're going at normal speed. <laughs> yeah. Low, low, you're low, having low, to low, corner low. at three miles an hour because you then not knock your headlight out. Mm. Then you end up, um, it takes quite a bit longer. So yeah, yeah. a five lap race might take you fucking, you know, an hour and a half. Because that's what I was finding it. I was like going, I thought, you know, four to rise and free, for example. It may, I thought it was the open world aspect of it, I thought, was more fun because there were some bits in it that you can do, you know, it's not just straight point-to-point races or straight yeah. like track lapped races or anything mm-hmm. like that. It was like, you know, oh, yeah, how fast can you go through this bit to do a speed camera or how far can you make this jump or something like that. That's a, yeah. And I think that's the thing because, I mean, deep down inside, I've never really got over the fact they've never made enough burnout game. Uh, yes, I know what you mean. The, and, but, but weirdly, I agree with you that I don't like Paradise because I, I find I, I didn't think that was anywhere as good. It's it's the old PS2 burnouts is what I want. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't really like open. I think what it is, I just don't like open worlds for driving games. I just don't think they they just don't really grab me personally. But I mean, I, you know, if people right. like them, then that's that's great. But um, me personally, I just it do, does nothing for me personally. No, it doesn't. It's not the but, you know, it's not the main factor of the game that would in, that would interest me. I enjoyed Forza Horizon 3 because the open world I enjoyed because it was going around and there was other things to do. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it was no different. And it, as I said, unlike, like, I mean, like the Burnout games, there was obviously, yes, it was all laps and point to points, I suppose. But they made it different by the fact like it was like they had like the revenge mode, which was like obviously you need to take out this many you need to take out this many cars in so many minutes or whatever. Yeah. You know, so I just thought it added a bit more variety, it felt a bit more arcadey mm-hmm. without without me feeling like I was playing a sim at the end of the day. That's yeah. why I said games like Gran Turismo or um, you know, like proper F one games don't ever interest me ever, you know. Uh-huh. I, I I want I want my rating games to be stupid and arcadey at the end of the day. So Yeah. You know, like Ridge Racer or Burnout or whatever, you know, I'm fine with those sort of games. Yeah. I know but, what I mean. But I mean in terms of going back to it, I mean, aside from that, you know, yeah, Sea of Thieves never interested I mean initially interested me but when I saw that it was very limited I sort of well, I didn't I really jump a, on it I played a little bit when I had that game pass trial and mm. um, I did think it was fun but I just didn't like with the whole game pass thing in general I just didn't play the games enough to justify the expense yeah so yeah. it was very quickly cancelled again um, and I did the same thing with I think I said to put you about last time we recorded that Switch Online didn't last long in my uh, trials I basically I cancelled the automatic renewal that day because because yeah like, I've not bought like, it. I, games I did like the wrestling week. and all that stuff are just they're not good. They're wank. No, a lot of them were wank, and I mean I played it for about yeah I think I paid for I did the initial week, mm-hmm. and then I was like yeah no unless they bring out some better games or, or yeah. they yeah or they give me you know more justification spend 20 quid a year on it i'm not going to bother yeah so but yeah i mean as i said uh i don't play switch online really mm. you know you know if i at best the only thing i'll do is sync up with other people which i don't know if that's required an internet connection for anyway yeah yeah i, I mean because i mean we played uh, i did play um uh i think you were there actually when we played mario kart we, 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 no, you might not have been. Um, I had Spike over and we had, uh, we did Mario. Oh, yeah, you were there. Um, we did Mario Kart uh, 8 on the Switch, but yeah. um, we also used um, Spike Switch to do sort of like multiple, uh, to have extra pads or have an extra people, and he synced up his. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. His Switch to my Switch. But I don't know if that requires an internet connection to do that. Right. Or whether because there's two switches in the room, it's okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. To be honest, yeah. But, well, I suppose I'll find out. I mean, if it ever becomes that massive of an issue, then I'll consider paying three quid for the month or whatever. Yeah, uh, when that when that happens. But mm-hmm. yeah, until then, you know, I don't play arms online or anything like that. So I mean, I'm happy to use it as a you know a couch multiplayer console. Really, at the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah, but. Yeah, not, not not nothing. No part of the online system because initially the NES games did interest me, but yeah, after seeing what was on currently available, I'm not interested anymore. Yeah. So. Yes. 
Anyway, mate, it's getting late, so I'm going to let you go. Yeah, no worries. Um, um, so thank you for, on, as usual. Yeah, obviously, uh, thank you for being on with me. And uh, thank you out there for listening. So if you've enjoyed the E14 Gamecast and you wish to, uh, you know, uh, subscribe, then you can. We're on all the all the good um, podcast platforms and Apple Podcasts, so that's always nice. Uh, we're on Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher. Basically, there's a lot of places you can find us. If you can't find us on one, then let me know and maybe I can remedy that. Um, but if you want to contribute to the show, send us games you're gaming or questions about games, then, uh, you know, whether that's history or news or whatever, we don't tend to do the news in terms, in terms of talking about it much because... Usually by the time these episodes go out, the news is old hat because that's how news works nowadays. It's like a singularity. Yeah. We approach <laughs> ever closer. Yeah. And uh, But if you want to email into the, into the show and get our thoughts on games or what games we're gaming, what games you're gaming, uh, yeah, then or... podcast at Emotionally14.com is the place to do that. Uh, we're on Twitter at Emotionally14, Instagram at Emotionally14, and we have a Facebook page and group, Emotionally14, and the E14 Gamecast. Uh, Blake, where can people find you on social media? Um, yep, yeah, you can find me on Facebook, including the E14 Gamescast Facebook group. Um, you can find me on Twitter at fucksake Blake if you can be bothered. And uh, you can also find me on Instagram at Harm of the Appreciator. Mm, nice. Uh, so you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rob Wade Vision. And uh, obviously, I'm behind the scenes at uh, Emotionally14 on social media as well. So anytime you interact with us, then you're probably going to get a reply from me. So that's lovely. Uh, if you are local to Broadstairs on the November the 10th and 11th, then we will be uh, demoing at Uncon Tabletop Convention on the 10th and 11th of November. We already have our plan. It is a large-scale uh, Armada and Legion game, which promises to be a jolly good time. And we're going to try and find a way to make those tie in together, which will be excellent. So if that's something you sounds like you're interested in, then we've got some mentions of it on the Facebook, but uh, Uncon UK, I think .co.uk, uh, or you can search Uncon Tabletop Convention on Facebook and find out all about the event, and you can go and buy your tickets as well. So uh, if you are going to it, then we will see you there. But uh, otherwise, obviously, you can look forward to tabletop stuff on the Evil Team YouTube channel, and uh, there are a few video game videos on there as well. So if that's your bag, then there are some there to entertain. But uh, in, other, in any other case, then uh, thank you for listening to the E14 Gamecast. We will catch you next time. Bibbidi-bop games. <laughs> wah, wah.